This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, October 30th, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Reuters, the U.S. military has isolated soldiers returning from an Ebola response mission in West Africa, and Australia has imposed a visa ban on the affected countries. Ebola has killed nearly 5,000 people since March, mostly in West Africa, but nine cases in the United States prompted states such as New York and New Jersey to ignore federal advice and quarantine all health workers returning from the region. The World Health Organization said it feared the quarantine measures could put people off, volunteering to go to Africa. Second today, according to The Blaze, Houston's mayor says the city has withdrawn subpoenas seeking speeches and other information from five pastors who publicly opposed an ordinance banning discrimination of gay and transgendered residents. Mayor Anise Parker said Wednesday that the subpoenas weren't intended to infringe on anyone's religious freedoms, but rather to help the city defend itself against a lawsuit challenging the ordinance that the city council approved in May. The pastors, dubbed the Houston Five, said the subpoenas violated their First Amendment rights. Third today, according to Israel National News, a spokesman for Jordan's mission to the United States said on Monday his country will request an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council on behalf of the Palestinian Authority. The Jordanian request comes following a letter from the PA's ambassador to the U.N., Riyad Mansour. Earlier on Monday, PA Chairman Mahmoud Abbas said he had called for an emergency U.N. Security Council session over the constant cycle of Arab rioting and violence, blaming Israeli aggression for the unrest both throughout Jerusalem in general and on the Temple Mount in particular. Fourth today, according to the Huffington Post, President Barack Obama on Wednesday touted the heroism of health care workers fighting Ebola abroad, further emphasizing the disagreement between himself and other politicians who want the workers quarantined when they were come home. Obama said during a White House event honoring American doctors and nurses returning from West Africa that all of them have signed up to leave their homes and their loved ones and head straight into the heart of the Ebola epidemic. We need to call them what they are, which is American heroes. They deserve our gratitude and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Fifth today, according to The Blaze, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blamed Islamic extremist elements for the escalation of violence in Jerusalem, saying they were trying to ignite the holy city. He said in his weekly cabinet meeting there are various radical Islamist forces at work here who are trying to burn down Israel's capital. The Prime Minister said Israeli police were bolstering their presence in the capital city by more than 1,000 officers following days of rioting by Palestinians. Six today, according to Time and CNN, Boko Haram militants reportedly abducted at least 30 boys and girls from a remote village in northeastern Nigeria over the weekend, throwing into question a government-declared ceasefire with the insurgents. The Islamist extremist on Friday raided Mafa, and news of the abduction slowly got out because regional telecom service has taken a severe hit during Boko Haram's five-year campaign of terror. Throughout the weekend, local leaders said the gunmen seized a dozen and a half boys and girls, some as young as age 11, in what was thought to be an attempt at recruiting child soldiers. The mass kidnapping in the restive region diminished hopes that the Nigerian government was close to striking a deal with the militants to secure the release of more than 219 schoolgirls abducted by the group in April. Seven today, according to Breitbart, on Wednesday at the Aspen Institute's Washington Ideas Forum, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said we are living through historic, defining times that will result in a new world order. When questioned about the ongoing global chaos by the national correspondent for The Atlantic, James Fallows, Hagel said, I think we are living through one of these historic, defining times. I think we are seeing a new world order. He went on to say what we're seeing in the Middle East with ISIL is going to require a steady, long-term effort. It's going to require coalitions of common interests, which we are forming. 
Eighth today, according to Vatican Radio, Jerry White, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the U.S. Bureau of Conflict and Stabilization Operations, was in Rome recently to promote a call to action for a global covenant of world religions. While noting that governments and civil society organizations are an important part of any peace strategy, White believes faith leaders have a crucial role to play in combating the alarming increase in religiously motivated violence. He said religion has to be part of the solution, and that's why a conversation about a new covenant, an interreligious peace treaty, must take place. Nine today, according to USA Today News, the San Francisco Giants beat the Kansas City Royals 3-2 to to win Game 7 of the 2014 World Series and earn their third championship in the last five seasons. Though starting pitcher Tim Hudson could not escape the second inning in the game, the Giants' bullpen shut down the Royals the rest of the way to lead San Francisco to yet another World Series win. Tenth and finally today, according to Reuters, Jordan has warned Israel that the 20-year peace treaty between the two countries would be threatened by continued Jewish settlement building and any effort to change the religious status of the area of the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Jordan's ambassador to Israel said all such acts are incompatible with international law and, if allowed to continue, will ultimately imperil the treaty. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.